You might be surprised to know that questions contain premises in them. When you answer a question, you might be accidentally agreeing to a hidden premise that you were unaware of. It's important to analyze the question before you even agree to answering it. Questions contain presumptions that are presumed to be acceptable to the respondent when the question is asked. The respondent becomes committed to give an answer once they agree that the question was valid. Asking questions can affect the position of the answerer once they've answered the question. There are good examples of questions that cannot be given a straightforward answer. Have you stopped abusing your spouse? This is an objectionable question because we cannot answer yes or no to this question. If we say yes, then at some point in the time we have abused our spouse. If we say no, then we are continuing to abuse our spouse. It is a trick question. Have you always been a liar, or are you just starting now? This is another example of a trick question. You can't say yes, and you can't say no. So what does one do? These sort of complex, loaded, trick questions can be broken down into their components. You can respond by asking for the question be, to be rephrased, refusing to answer the question, or asking why they asked that question in the way they did, or even answering in such a way that you're off the hook. Have you stopped abusing your spouse? Well, I have never abused my spouse in the past, nor am I doing so now. Obviously, not all questions are fallacious or loaded, but can still be complex in nature. Will you open the door if Kevin forgets his key? Well, no, actually, I'm going to teach him a lesson that he'll never forget. If he forgets his key, I'm not going to open it. Well, yes, I'm going to open the door, but if he has his key stolen... That's a different story. Obviously, this sort of question is not meant to be any sort of debate. It's just a normal question we might have in everyday life. But you see that there are premises contained within the question. We're containing the premise that Kevin's going to forget his key instead of having it stolen, for example. So by answering the question, I am admitting to some form of commitment on my part. There are, of course, complex questions that can happen during conversations in the workplace or in everyday life that are not argumentative in nature and don't contain any loaded questions, and answering them is just a part of life. Uh, where does this spark plug go? Well, it goes right here under the uh, drive shaft. You have to wedge it in. Uh, slightly at an angle to the left. Now, is this a debate? No, it's just a normal conversation. So, although it is important to recognize when a question is a fallacious question or a loaded question, it's also important to recognize that during a normal conversation and even possibly during a debate, questions can be asked that are not fallacious but might still be complex. For a debate or persuasionary dialogue, it's important to note that your answers will form the rest of your argument. One debate that I watched was almost ridiculous in nature, and I might comment on it at a later time. But the essence of it was asking whether or not a concept was important. By answering no, the opponent automatically fails. Why? because we don't spend time debating on things that are not important. To even answer this kind of question was to commit the very mistake that I am talking about here in this video. Don't answer a loaded question like that. The opponent should have rejected the question from the get-go. I'm not going to debate whether this is important or not. To do so would indicate that it is important. I demand that we rephrase the question in the following way. 
agreeing to this sort of debate just showed how willfully ignorant this person was on the mechanics of debate. I hope that you understand a little bit better about questions and answers. I look forward to any questions you have, and I will try to provide the answers. But I do have a question for you. Have you now subscribed to me, or will you subscribe to me next time? Until then, peace out.